just think uh, that uh, actually their methods uh, are rather uh, primitive. They are working with the same uh, narratives, uh, but also they uh, involve a lot of money in this. Uh, and uh, because of money, uh, it happens like, uh, for example, in Ukraine, uh, they started like uh, under our um, investigation, uh, the research organization that calls uh, Index Attack, uh, they um, have started the situation and since 2004, uh, after uh, the first revolution in Ukraine happened, uh, they started uh, influencing with disinformation and misinformation, uh, working uh, with uh, civil society to influence on the results of uh, to get power to control uh, definite regions. Uh, as always, it's it was easier to control exactly east regions because it's closer to. Um, borders and uh, it's really for them strategic area yeah and uh, how they they were doing it uh, before the war they had uh, like um, connections ties uh, with political parties that calls uh, opposition bloc now the, the name was and before it calls party of regions and before they also were, <laughs> yeah. And uh, actually, uh, it was the money of Ru uh, Russian financial groups that were uh, invested in media. Uh, they created uh, such kind of uh, network of media uh, that were uh, se selling people uh, the narratives. Uh, like telling, uh, showing, lighting in uh, different uh, bad things, uh, what happening with economy or uh, some under some reforms that are going against uh, Europe Union, uh, joining the Europe Union or actions. The same narratives that we see now against NATO uh, that we uh, for example, uh, that uh, the same narrative they use uh, in many countries in Balkan also, yeah, that NATO wants to spread and that virus, Russia wants to protect herself, self, and uh, so on. And US uh, against US, they also were spreading the narratives uh, through this media, and the. Uh, uh, after the war started, uh, to all, all this media channel was closed because before uh, all the time, because of democracy and liberal liberal principles uh, for our society, uh, it was like uh, we can't close the media. But the closer, the more uh, talks about the war were, uh, the more uh, were understanding that these media working not good, not right. After the revolution of dignity in 2014, um, it was not really clear uh, seen that this media works for Russia or doing something bad because it, it was looking like just a position, uh, just as a point of view that is totally normal for democratic uh, society and right. And only like, I guess in November, 2021, uh, it was realized that this media should be closed. Uh, and uh, because of course, uh, it, most of them were um, the ownership of Medvedev. And uh, you know, the story about Medvedev, who is he? And uh, that's why it was a final decision. Uh, so after the war started, uh, as they lose these channels of media, they still had uh, also uh, politics, politics who were uh, on, in opposition bloc. And these politics start uh, doing video chats uh, in Telegram. And mostly now uh, Telegram used as a main source of uh, disinformation and propaganda. Also, they use uh, Facebook 
uh, for making a bot uh, chain, bot network, in which they spread in definite messages, definite nar narratives uh, about uh, the Kiev and situation uh, in Ukraine and the messages about uh, peace, that we need peace in any conditions. So speaking to, about uh, Europe, uh, Russia was officially recognized by the uh, European External Action Services as the main disinformation source of this year. To demonstrate the scale of Russia's disinformation efforts, we had uh, even uh, less data uh, uh, data and investigation. For example, 20% of articles in foreign media about Ukraine use Kremlin controlled media like Sputnik or RIA Novosti and as informational source. But uh, by doing this, uh, foreign media unfortunately amplify mainly uh, narratives, mainly narratives for so called uh, Russian media with no connections to journalists, but a proven record of spreading genocidic rhetoric. They uh, use uh, lies. They don't uh, use any um, independent facts. Some journalism already lost as a meaning there. After uh, one year of the school uh, full-scale Russian invasion, uh, the share of the media spreading this information uh, remains almost unchanged and uh, only within a month before the, uh, before uh, January we had like uh, 7,000 articles uh, with disinformation, manipulation and Russian cliches. Uh, continuous uh, efforts uh, with very, uh, various uh, organizations to improve uh, the situation uh, for Russia. Uh, it's only during one month, the 7,000 articles. Uh, and uh, according to statistics, it's like 5% uh, of 50 main tier one media uh, use uh, these narratives and without any kind of context. So they don't explain that it's uh, propaganda or something, but they just use it. And uh, this is the way first and uh, understandable way. And the second way also, exactly for Balkans, for example, what I know of, we were uh, investigated is um, they use Facebook because the Facebook is more uh, spread in these countries. Uh, they use for, uh, Facebook and advertising, Google advertising uh, uh, to spread uh, messages and narratives about Azov and Nazi. Um, because um, many media in Balkans can't uh, come to Ukraine and uh, start uh, lighting up uh, the situation, they just uh, used uh, some narratives that were given by uh, RIA Novosti or uh, Russian uh, sources or also Reuters. Reuters, um, usually Russia use Reuters uh, paid content to, to start spreading some kind of narrative. We, uh, we have a lot of evidence. Uh, it's a pity, but they really uh, have uh, advertising their <laughs> articles and uh, writers uh, let them do it. Um, but I can't say that uh, it's... Uh, yeah, it's... Something bad about roaders, yeah, but uh, this is the fact. And after this, for example, we have case uh, when um, about referendum that were uh, so-called referendum uh, that Reuters first one was first one who wrote uh, the number of uh, percent uh, of uh, people who were voting as they wrote and. Uh, it was uh, a main message uh, at the beginning of the news uh, that uh, definitely was misinformation. And uh, during the one hour, it spread it uh, like in 200 different kind of small media. And then after it, uh, they have changed the main message at the beginning. 
and uh, but already uh, all these media printed it and it starts spreading and sharing more and more the main message is uh, we need to cooperate with uh, ukrainian independent media and uh, with ukrainian as uh, such as our uh, organization are the media ukrainian center uh, it's a communicators who can help you with uh, checking the facts also, we have analytical centers that helps also to uh, check the facts. For example, Stop Fakes, it's an international organization uh, that based in Ukraine, but they work in different countries, Balkans also, where you can uh, come to and uh, check just or uh, ask them to help to reach someone exactly to have uh, proofs and evidence. And PR Army also be, helps with it very fast. Like in a, in an hour, we can find somebody from eyewitnesses and uh, organize you a translation alive or uh, with with some translation with people.